Hey, Artistic Humans, Paul Sizer here. Thank you for joining me today in the heart of Sizer Design and Illustration, deep in the heart of Kalamazoo. Um, yes, today we are going to be uh, focusing in today's session about simple and complex forms and how to draw them. Um, with all of these tutorials that I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to be showing you things in Photoshop and in uh, Manga Studio and Clip Studio Paint. Um, but you are not dependent on having this technology to be able to follow along and do the work that I'm doing. Everything that I'm showing you in these demos can be done with a uh, pencil and a piece of paper. Um, anything that you're comfortable drawing with, markers, pens, brush pens, um, colored pencils, doesn't make a difference. If you've got something that makes a mark and you've got something that makes a mark on, um, you are able to follow along and do the... Um, do the work along. And as I'm talking, I would encourage you to um, try out and draw the stuff that I'm doing, um, but then also to practice this on your own um, off video so that you can uh, try things out and uh, you know, see what you can come up with. So what I wanted to talk about today was kind of the one of the real basic things about how artists work and um, the idea of <clears throat> being able to create original and complex forms always starts out with the fact that even the most complex forms can be broken down into very simple shapes. So for instance, if I'm looking at this uh, ink bottle here, um, uh, what tends to be kind of a problem sometimes with people <clears throat> is that they're going to start out and try and draw this thing by drawing what is the contour of it, I mean just going around the outside um, and just tracing the outside of it first and then trying to fill in the information on the inside. But um, <clears throat> While you can do that, and there's not really anything wrong with that, um, it does kind of limit you as far as how you're able to see this thing and, um, and give you the flexibility of being able to alter and control what these shapes are doing and, and then be able to uh, adapt them and uh, modify them to do what you really want to do. So as I'm looking at this um, bottle of ink here, um, I'm breaking it down in my brain into the component shapes. So I'm taking a look at things like that the bottom here, um, looking at it straight on, is kind of a rectangle. Um, that this area here is another rectangle, but again, is um, it's all of this stuff obviously is circular, so it's all uh, spheres. Um, rather, I'm sorry, it's all um, uh, tubes. It's all um, cylinders that are stacked on top of one another. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, um, so as I'm taking a look at this, I'm breaking this down into that. This is one, two, three cylinders sitting on top of one another and then there's a modified cylinder that kind of goes to a point kind of a rounded point here at the top so from starting out from those very simple basic shapes um, I'm able to take and redraw that thing but that also allows me to move this around in space to be able to treat this like a dimensional object so that I can move it change it and be able to think of it having different vantage points and being able to see it from different perspectives and stuff so this is just something that applies to being able to draw human forms, um, machinery, objects, whatever, animals, all this kind of stuff. And I think most artists kind of do this, that when they're looking at stuff, they're always breaking things down into component shapes. So um, just as a starting point for taking a look at this, um, I want to talk about extruding shapes. And let's go ahead and start drawing some stuff here. So um, when I draw, or when I'm showing you these kinds of drawings, uh, the stuff that I'm doing is red is the stuff that I'm doing in pencil. And then when I do things in black, that would be the things that I do in ink, like a more permanent thing. So today we're going to be mostly sketching. So this is going to be all done with uh, a red pencil. Um, but you can use any color, any kind of a pencil that you want. It doesn't make a difference. I'm just doing this so it's easier for you to see on screen. So if we take a look at basic shapes that everybody knows and everybody draws with, we can start out with, again, kind of the, uh, the trifecta, uh, the holy trinity of base shapes. Circles, squares, and triangular forms. So as we're doing this, if you want to be more technically correct, ellipses, rectangles, and triangle forms, because that's the way it is. So as we're taking a look at these, these are all two-dimensional shapes. They all have height and width. These are all flat forms that we can start out with. But to extrude a shape means that you're going to be taking that shape and moving it into a dimensional space, that you're moving it into three dimensions. 
Now the simple, the very most simple way that you can always extrude a shape is to draw that shape again. So again, another uh, ellipse shape. And then um, finding the high points on those, connecting those two shapes. So as soon as I draw these two circles and connect this, um, the shapes here, then I have a cylinder. The same way here that I start out with and draw another rectangular or square form with this. As soon as I connect those four corners, then that turns it into a cube. Um, same thing with this. I can extrude this triangle into a triangular or a prism shape. Um, but you can also uh, spin a triangle on its axis. So for instance, if I was to draw a triangle here, and if we imagine kind of the middle point of that triangle through here, and rather than just extruding it, if I was to spin this on the center axis here, um, I'd be able to make a cone shape. So with a lot of things, and this is part of what you're starting to see here, with a lot of these things, most of what you're looking at is a combination of different shapes doing different things, and then the way that they connect creates the forms. So from that standpoint, I've got a um, different cylinders. I can have long cylinders. I can do uh, disc shapes. Um, I can do... And, and literally, I mean, these are just geometric shapes, but with anything here, um, I can additionally also extrude kind of amorphous forms like this. So if I have two forms like this, I can kind of, and those aren't exactly the same. Oh, let me do that line there. And of course, as I'm doing my demo, somebody's decided to start mowing their lawn. So if you hear a lawnmower in the background, I'll think of it as extra extra soundtrack for you. So, you know, as we're beginning to take a look at this, we can begin to see that um, these shapes all become three-dimensional when we just do the simple extrusion like this. And these become shapes and forms that we can then be able to combine and build into different things. So in that same way where, um, like I said here, if I wanted to have two shapes that are slightly different, then I can just use these straight lines and begin to turn them into a bowl shape or something like that. Or I can um, create a circle here and a circle here and combine these things and make a curved cylinder and then begin to see these things as becoming like uh, the handles on a coffee cup. So, or possibly two uh, macaroni noodles attached to a cup. I don't know how that actually looks there. Anywho, um, so yeah, the, so right now you're seeing simple, the, the simplest, you know, the simplest shapes that you can build become three-dimensional objects that then can be combined and have other things uh, come together with them. So this is extrusion, uh, extruding shapes. So let's go ahead and clear our board there and uh, so, um, as we're beginning to take a look at stuff, like I said, with the, uh, with the ink bottle here, uh, I'm going to set this in front of me, and what I would encourage you to do is that um, when you're trying to draw something, uh, I would say it'd be a good idea to have something that you can pick up and really take a look at, um, rather than just trying to draw something maybe initially from your uh, imagination. Pick up something that you can actually see. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to take a look, and I'm going to draw this uh, ink bottle that I found, and um, I'm going to put it over here, and I'm going to use that as my reference. So when we're drawing things, it's awesome to be able to draw from your mind, but a good artist also knows how to look at things because, again, it's, it's a reference point. It's a way that you can see something and be more specific about what you're drawing and really be, really be precise about um, taking a look at how something actually looks and drawing from life, which is always really important to do. So if I'm going to take a look at this bottle here, like I said, as we're taking a look at this, break it down into shapes. So we know that it's a circular bottle. So I'm going to be doing cylinders. And like I said, I'm thinking of this as kind of like three cylinders that are stacked on top of one another. So if I'm going to start out with my cylinders, I'm going to start out first just kind of breaking down and just, you know, kind of loosely getting, getting the shapes and forms. And 
because we're sketching, and I think this is one thing too that I want you as we begin to do these drawing uh, exercises more often, is don't worry about your drawings and the pencil stuff that you're doing being perfect. Um, spoiler alert, it's never going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. And if it is perfect, you're spending too much time trying to make something perfect that's meant to be kind of rough. Because we're just figuring things out here. So that's why it's the sketching stage. Um, this is not final art. It's not the stuff that you're trying to do to make it look absolutely crystal clear and beautiful. This is the building stuff. This is laying down the foundation so you can make it beautiful later. So as I'm beginning to take a look at this bottle here, uh, let me go ahead and center that a little bit. Um, I know that my, my bottom cylinder is going to be the same size, top and bottom. And like I said, I'm just, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to kind of, I'm going to follow my own rules here and just be kind of, um, kind of rough with this. So you can see that I'm beginning to just rough in the bottom part of that bottle. So again, we're taking a look at that. That's that portion right there. Now we've got a skinnier portion and it looks like it's about, it's kind of equidistant on the side. So I would say that that cylinder that's laying on top of it is about half the size of the, uh, the bottom cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm going to um, rough this uh, oblong shape here, this ellipse shape. Um, an ellipse is, if we're thinking about this, when we draw a circle, when we look at it flat, it's like this. But as soon as we put it on an oval, that implies that it's kind of tipping. It's tipping into perspective. It's tipping so that it's laying flat on a surface that is dimensional. So I'm drawing circles here, but I'm drawing them as ellipses. And what those ellipses are doing is showing that those circles are in perspective. So again, there's a little, and there's a little bit of a taper on the ink bottle, so it's not going to be perfectly straight. This one, these are kind of uh, perpendicular to the surface that's laying on. These kind of taper in a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do the uh, <clears throat> the cap right now. So again, the cap is the cap is just a tiny bit bigger than the neck of that bottle, and that circle up there. Eh. I'm going to go ahead and erase that just real fast. Again, like I said, don't don't be too don't be too picky about stuff in the sketch stage. There we go. That's about the right proportion. Because that's what we're figuring out. I'm looking at this and I'm trying to make mental decisions about, again, the proportion of things, um, how the relative size of one part to another is, and, and stuff like that. So, you know, we're kind of roughing this in. So this, yeah, it's a little bit bigger. This is the cap. And then um, we'll do one more ellipse up top here for the little, um, the little squeezer bulb that's on the top of the, the bottle. And again, this is something where, again, this is kind of a modified cone shape where um, on this one right here, I'm going to kind of take the sides up a little bit, but that kind of rounds off at the top. So I'm just going to kind of make a like a circle shape up there and just kind of let that go. And that's the, that's the little suction bulb that's at the top of an ink bottle. So as we're taking a look at this, <clears throat> we have a basic shape and form for this puppy. Um, so this now has the same kind of basic shapes, um, and again we can we can alter this, but I, I think that looks that looks pretty much in in the uh, the right proportion up and down as to how how thick things are, um, how much space is between uh, this the neck of this bottle and the base of the bottle, um, how tall it is, the relative shape of these different things here. So yeah. Um, so again, we've got a, a form here that now I can begin to um, can take a look at. Now, because we're sketching this and we're using full full shapes, in a sense, we're kind of looking at this at like an X-ray, meaning that we can see the uh, the other side of this. Um, but in reality, this would be a solid form, and if it's not transparent, if it's not made of glass or something that's see-through, um, we wouldn't see all of these things here. So, as I'm taking a look at this. Um, for sketching, I'm using this as a way to kind of check my shapes, to be able to look at these forms and say, yeah, these are these seem to be in the right space, um, but only only the frontmost portion of these forms, only the ones that are in front, are actually going to be are going to be um, seeable by us um, when we take a look at this as a solid shape. So, like I said, I've kind of checked checked my base forms, kind of got things you know, visually like I want to have them. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with that. Um, 
So the next thing I would do to kind of refine this sketch would be to get rid of the things that are hidden. These are the things that would be um, away from me. So I'm going to use the eraser here, and I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to erase away the back portions of these shapes. So again, there's stuff here that's in the front, but this is the stuff in the back. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going through with the eraser tool and just kind of cleaning this up. And you can do this with the eraser on your pencil if you like. Um, and a lot of times what I'll do is if I'm actually sketching something, um, I'll leave the messy lines because if I'm going to be going and inking over this stuff, um, I don't have to worry about this because I'm going to be doing an ink layer on top of this. But if this is something that you're just doing as a, as a pencil drawing, absolutely, you can go in and erase the extra lines that you don't need. So again, I'm taking a look at this. I would see this stuff, but all of these lines in here are going to be um, gone. So I'm going to go ahead with my eraser and I'm going to just sort of clean those pups up there. Again, not you know, it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it's just sort of you know, just sort of cleaning that up and just getting rid of uh, lines. So when we're sketching, the other thing too is that part of what you're doing is in sketching, you're, you're throwing down all the lines, and then as an artist, you're taking a look at this and saying which of the lines are the ones that I want to maintain and want to keep, so that they um, are the ones that I actually want to use. So again, I'm going to kind of go in. I'm going in here and just kind of getting rid of the lines that I don't need. And again, here's uh, getting rid of the ones that are kind of in back here that I wouldn't see. And there's just a few more little it's kind of messy lines there. But again, we're not worried about being perfect. We're just worried about um, having this in, um, having it look halfway decent because we're going to refine from here. So now as we take a look at this, um, there's a few things that I might change. Like for instance, I might um, go in here with my pencil and kind of extend that down a little bit just to kind of perfect that. You know, but basically, basically, I've got that basic shape, that basic form uh, for the ink bottle. So if there was other details that I wanted to add on there, just to uh, remind myself, like for instance, there's a kind of like a ridged surface that's on the on the uh, the top of the bottle there. So I'll add that on, and these these circular forms, the circular lines that we have here. These are indicating um, that these are round and that they are dimensional and that they are coming towards you. So um, anytime you have a dimensional or a curved line, that implies that it's following a curved shape or that it's a round, uh, a round shape. So if we were stacking this, and let me go ahead and just put this over the side. If we were doing this and if you were looking at this like absolutely straight on, um, these things, and I'll just do this kind of quickly because so I don't want to take a bunch of time. But if we were looking at this completely straight on, we would see this and we wouldn't see those lines would be just straight up rectangles. Like that. So these lines are straight, all these lines here are parallel to one another. So, but that doesn't really have any dimensional feel. You can see that these lines, because they bow out a little bit, because they curve, um, that those lines are the ones that actually make it seem three-dimensional. Um, even though these are these are correct, I mean, relatively correct. If I spend a little more time doing it, um, you know, this is the correct silhouette of this. This is the correct silhouette of this. This is the correct silhouette of this. But this is 100% flat over here, and this one is actually dimensional. We have curve, uh, and the curves all kind of agree with one another. So again, this curve and this curve and this curve and this curve here, and all these curves here all agree that it's wrapping around the same kind of central central point and all of these ellipses that we've stacked are all on top of one another. So that is um, that's a starting point. So with this again this is just an ink bottle like I said but once you kind of get the idea that this is how things are built um, then you can begin to um, create and make stuff that is um, you know, more customizable because you you know how to add these shapes. Like for instance, we could take this 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 uh, shape here and um, let me go ahead and get rid of this guy here. He's bugging me. All right. Um, when we have this shape here, we can customize this. So this is just a lowly ink bottle, okay? But with um, with my uh, by able to by my being able to go in and um, add stuff to this, we can make this something way cooler than just an ink bottle. So for instance, if I was sketching on this, um, 
I could add other um, other shapes. So for some reason, just popped into my head. It'd be thought it'd be kind of cool to maybe kind of add in some other um, some other cylinders that are kind of coming off this. Um, I'm not sure what this is actually going to become. Um, you know, actually, what I was thinking about was um, actually, yeah, here, bear with me here. I'm just going to kind of freeform this, and you can see how um, how when I'm drawing this stuff, you can see in the same way that I would normally draw that I was showing you. I'm just going to kind of do it and shut up and let you watch. Um, here and again um, this is all stuff that um, again I'm just I don't know I'm pulling this out of my imagination I'm just kind of freeforming with it but because I have that base idea of knowing how shapes work and how these shapes can do I can I can customize this stuff like a crazy amount. So as I'm taking a look at it, it in fact might start to become, oh, this one might be kind of, kind of looking straight at you. Um, so as I begin to take a look at this and then um, again, kind of just bust away the, um, the shapes and forms that I don't need, stuff that would be covered up here, that's hidden by the, actual solid version of these forms. And again, this is this totally is not perfect. But um, but the idea behind this is that you can um, you're customizing these things. And so, you know, as we begin to take a look at stuff here, this can become a robot of some sort, or an explorational vehicle, or whatever, or a spaceship. Um, yeah. So, Um, and that same thing too. I, I talked about this just kind of briefly, but um, as we're talking, when we're talking about how these curved lines show that something is curved, so we've got these tubes that are going from these uh, blaster things. So rather than putting a straight line on these uh, to show like a segmented or a, like a kind of a, uh, a hose that has sections in it, um, rather than doing straight lines, uh, I'm going to do lines that agree with the curves on the um, ellipses that are in the end here. Meaning that I'm going to, if I wanted to have like lines that went around these. Instead of doing a straight line like that, which just flattens it out, if I do curved lines, those curved lines are kind of agreeing with the ellipse, and it actually looks like it's kind of wrapping around the, uh, the tube itself. There's that. Burr, burr, burr. Same thing here, if I wanted to put a, a, a contour line on there, making it curved agrees with the curved surface here. Little interior. So I don't know, maybe these are eyes. There. Humans like uh, humans like to find faces and things. Uh, we're sort of um, genetically predisposed to that. We like to find uh, as babies, we like to find mom's face or dad's face. And so as humans, as adults or uh, older people, we like to take a look at stuff and find, uh, make faces out of things. So, yeah. There. there we go. So now I've changed the ink well into some weird robot face. But, like I said, this once you have the idea about thinking about being able to take something um, 
and build it with very simple shapes to extrude those shapes and to make those shapes do what you want. You can alter and make really complex forms starting out with just circles, triangles, and squares and rectangles. And uh, once you have that down, you can customize that till the cows come home. So what I would suggest to do is um, what I did in this uh, tutorial is go and find something that you that you can hold in your hand, something that's you know small, not too big, but something that you can take a look at, that you can pick up, and that you can kind of examine, and um, take a look at that and try and draw it. And again, try and just assess like like I did. What's this thing? What's it made out of? What are the shapes made out of? How does it work? How does it you know how does it feel? And and draw something you know reproduce something as a starting point that you can put in your hand that you can draw from reference. But then take that reference starting point and turn it into something cooler. Turn it into um, uh, like a, a robot or a vehicle or a machine or or something else or some kind of animal. Um, and start out with that. And again, because of the way that I'm showing you with the extrusion here, these are uh, a little bit more of uh, kind of mechanical because we're using more geometric shapes. But in future tutorials, I'm going to be talking about how we can take these extruded shapes and create more um, naturalistic, human-like, animal-like shapes as well. Um, same kind of basic concept, just kind of a different way of approaching it. So uh, that is all for today's tutorial. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, um, you can ask me questions in the comments or send me uh, questions via email or the next time we meet in class. So thank you for listening. This is Paul Sizer. Keep drawing, draw every day, and I will see you soon. Take it easy. See you later. Bye-bye.